All right, so let's go attack these chain chomps. So unfortunately, I just need to be able to guard the attacks from the chain chomps. Otherwise, I die. I think I put away... Yeah, I put away the life stream I got. But the good thing is once we get past the uh, chain chomps, it's pretty much smooth sailing because fighting Jin Koopa isn't that bad. I did a little practice run earlier. Let's go with the harder fight first. Because I have to beat the two chain chomps. I have to guard the two chain chomp attacks. What I'll do is I'll save real quick in the save block at the top and I'll come right back. Also, I'm going to pick this up real quick before I forget because I know I will. Also, um, you may notice on the video I put some borders on there. Uh, let me know if you like them. I thought it would be kind of nice to have something there besides just blackness. Uh, the, cur the curtain part I don't really like all that much, but like, <laughs> I'm not the best at art, so I did what I could. Alright, see you guys in a moment. Alright, so I'm actually going to fight this chomp first. Because this is the easiest of the three chomp fights. Because you can get... You only have to deal with one of these chain chomps. Because you can get the first strike with Bombat. So now I just... I should live no matter what because... I think the most damage I take from Chain Chomp is uh, 4 damage. Yeah. Unfortunately, I messed up the, the guard, but it's fine. I'm gonna go save again and I'll meet you down at the other chain chop room. Alright, so before we can go into the chain chop room, I obviously have to drain the sand in order to get access to it. So let's do that. All right, so hopefully I can get the the two successful guards. Otherwise, it's going to be another death for the death counter here. Also, I kind of want to show something weird. I, did, I just learned about this. So, uh, apparently, not, the, uh, the chain chomp that follows you, it, it like moves to your position. So if I, I do this right, the chain chomp is going to move over towards me. I didn't know about this. I don't know. I think it's kind of funny. So I'm going to change to Bombette. And then Power Bomb. And it didn't matter if I did damage with Mario. Because uh, two Power Bombs is going to be enough. Okay, there's one. Dang it. Alright, uh, that's another death. I'm wondering if I could delay Bombette to do a like place her right before I pick it up and that way she might hit the chain chomp ah oh, that doesn't work um I could try putting a Koopa T or I could Thunderbolt that way I only need to guard one yeah that works. Is the dry bones dies to the power shell. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, good, because I didn't. Because I suck at guarding. Let's just use Bombette. The unfortunate part is, I do think I need another. Uh, what's this item called? Thunderbolt. I'll need to get one before we do the fight. It's uh, triangle, diamond, wonderstone. Thankfully, after this chapter is when. Uh, B plus G run gets more exciting. Um, yeah, I'll be right back once I have my other lightning bolt. Oh, one thing I didn't realize, because I usually don't do this, but like the music after opening the uh, that secret area, it persists through the entire tomb, I guess? It's kind of interesting. I never noticed that. I assume this music won't be the same once I like come back here, but an interesting touch. Oh yeah, so I'm back. Uh, yeah, interestingly, the music is still like this. So I guess it's like some sort of flag in the code or some state in the code that says I've opened the tomb or the secret tomb in this area. I, I just think it's interesting because I've never really noticed it, and I played this game like like ten or fifteen times, and then. This is really interesting on the things you never really pick up on. So Dutton Koopa has 40 HP. See, we're gonna use Paracarry. So we gotta be careful on his shells because his shells actually inflict a shrink on you. I don't think it's too much of a big deal because Mario's not going to be doing any damage. Normally, he'll be using a lightning bolt to deal his damage. Um, it's mostly important on the chain chomp. Tutan Koopa, we can pretty much survive most of his attacks, assuming I guard them. I think to be safe, uh, no, just go with the Thunderbolt. That's five. Thirty-five left. It's eleven. He does he waste the turn summoning Chain Chomp? He does. Okay. Use the Chain Chomp on, or use the Lightning Bolt on the Chain Chomp. Do you shell shot. Ooh. Thunderbolt. The next turn we'll use Dry Juice. Oh, also one thing I forgot to mention. Um, is that when you upgrade enemies, uh, they gain a... Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? When you upgrade the enemies, they get things added to their base attacks. So uh, Bombette, when she does Body Slam, it's like Spin Smash. And for Paracarry, if you do the attack proper, the action command correctly, uh, you gain 1 FP. I just need to make sure I... Oh, dang it, I messed this up. Um, I don't know if this is going to be okay. I'm going to do Skydive, actually. I don't want to waste the FP on Shell Shot. Better to use it for this turn. Okay, I think we're fine. I need to use Thunderbolt here. I don't know if he's going to reduce my health next.
So I need to use a refresh to get rid of the defense drop that he did to me. And puts me at full HP and I gain 5 FP too, so that's good. Um, I haven't done that much damage to him. Unfortunately, I don't remember how much damage I've done to him, so... I think as long as I play somewhat safe, we should be fine. So this one, I think, puts my health at 2. That's fine. I think he's going to get close to when his health... Or when he does the attack on himself. Which is this. Good. So here... I'm going to get the dry juice. Should I do Koopa Tea? I'll do Koopa Tea. I think that's probably the safer bet. Okay. He summons Chain Shop. I remember when I... When I did my practice run, I just hit him. And that was enough to kill, so... I think I'm just gonna go and say I did enough damage. I did enough damage, yeah, alright. <laughs> that was close. Should really be keeping track of the, the uh, damage I'm doing, but whatever. Oh, I was doing Kuba. I think he's the easiest out of all the bosses, to, complete, to be completely honest, because you have Plenty of resources to beat him. Goomba King, you don't have too much. You just got to make sure that he doesn't hit you with the triple uh, kick. Um, and the later bosses, you know, I'll talk about them when we get to them. But yeah, I don't. Oh, yeah. And the um, what is it? Cooper Bros. I think once you figure out the thing about Cooper Bros, where you have to make sure you don't waste Bombette's turn, it's pretty much easy. You just keep using items after that to just do lots of AoE damage. I think Toot and Koopa, you can just get really screwed if he just chooses to do the triple attack. Whereas, you know, Toot and Koopa, pretty much, he seemed to be somewhat more strict. I guess, depending on what you do, certain actions, they kind of change the... their actions. I should probably try doing that more, just like looking at what my actions are and what the enemy does or the bosses do. That way I can write a more better strategy to come up with because I'm definitely going to have to come up with certain strategies later on. So this peach section is going to be really important. We need to get a uh, power rush and there's another badge you get. I think it's deep focus. Not too important, but we need to get power rush. Otherwise, I don't know if the rest of the games will be possible to do at a current level. Maybe it is, but, you know, Power Rush will definitely make things a lot easier. Because we have Danger Saver, which reduces our FP cost by 1 when we're in danger. Which, you know, since we have the 5 HP because of Greed Stone, we're always going to be in danger. And with uh, Power Rush gives plus 2 attack. So, we'll be pretty chonky in terms of strength. I'm going to get Power Rush, get caught by the Koopa Patrol. I think it's faster than having to go back. Oh man, I didn't mean to get caught there though. thought it was fast enough. Thankfully they get rid of that. Uh, you walking through there again. Let's try not to mess it up this time, though. I'll do it safer this time. Oh yeah, this gold guy. <laughs> we might be seeing him later soon who, who knows 
I forget when exactly you can see him. So let's get caught here. I don't want to have to go back. It might be faster, but yeah. I kind of like that jingle, so. It's so cartoony. So we need to get to the chest room. This isn't too bad, we just need to hug the wall. Pick up deep focus. I don't think we're gonna be using deep focus all that much. I think early on it's not too bad, but uh, you definitely get like a power creep and it's not as useful anymore. There'll be more usage of uh, deep focus in um, chapter four, I believe. You get a lot more badges that uh, synergize with it. But for right now, I'm not going to use it. After this peach section, I think is when the game gets a lot more interesting in terms of just what you're able to do with the amount of damage output you have now. Also, you, I don't know if you noticed, but there's like something that looks like a jam and jelly, but it's a different color than what a jam and jelly would be. I don't know if you can make that item. I think you have to actually just like find it. There might be some in, in some shops later in the game. No, this is Mamar. Her, I think her ability is pretty lame. The only good thing about her, I think, is that she gives you another bar of star energy. <laughs> Got pretty much it. Like, cause it's like, I don't utilize sleep at all. Like, the only thing I can think of for sleep is to, um, use it for allowing you to get, like, setups done. Like, if you need to apply charges and then attack after the effect. Because the enemy is going to be healing any damage you've done to them. But, I don't know. That and, you know, sleep, when you hit an enemy, the effect wears off immediately. Let's go give this to Colorado. Get a star piece. Extra star piece, too. The letter. Definitely gonna be. I'm definitely not excited having to get all the star pieces. Because I remember I was doing that in one of my other files, and it was a chore to get that done. There's some extra. There's not too many that Shade Blade added, but he definitely added some. Now, thankfully, I have a guide that uh, shows you where to get all the star pieces for, like, vanilla. If you guys want a link to uh, or to the guide that I use, let, let me know in the comments. Let's see. I, I think I'm gonna upgrade Gumbario for the time being. I guess uh, I'll be able to upgrade Coops too, but I'll probably just upgrade Gumbario for the time being right now. I already have the two characters I'd want to use. Uh, Goombara doesn't actually get anything added onto his 
base attack. Kind of vanilla like that. Uh, Cooper, though, he does do a defense drop with the turn that he attacks. The, the only way that you get usage out of it is like if an enemy has one defense, uh, it drops the defense by one, and then then Mario would attack, so you would need to attack with Koops first. Um, I haven't seen an actual use for it. To me, um, kind of niche, to be honest. If you need to do a power bounce and you don't want the the one defense screwing up the damage for it, I guess. Oops. <laughs> Didn't mean to talk to him. All right. Um, I think I'm gonna collect some badges real quick, and then from there, that'll be the end of the episode. We're gonna get some badges from Ralph. They're gonna be really great badges, by the way. A lot of game changers here. Sleepy Stomp. Not one of the game changers, actually. Because once again, I don't think Sleep is all that good in this mod. Double Dip, really great. Uh, those Lightning Bolts that we were doing a lot of damage with, we can now do 10 damage a turn for only two FP, pretty cool. Uh, Death Spotter, that's a badge uh, shade added, pretty much. Once you've tattled an enemy, or if you have peekaboo equipped, you can see the defense of an enemy. Pretty cool. Uh, we'll see what the other item is in Ralph's shop. But first, we need to go collect the um, some badges from here. So we're gonna go grab the Power Rush and the Deep Focus, and another badge from... Uh, I forget the character's name up on top. I'll title him because I forgot his name. I think this is a Merlovely. Yeah, Merlovely. The Merly is the one in dry, dry outpost. Is this Merle or is that the one? Is Merlot? I think Merle is the one. In chapter seven. I'm gonna get a flower fanatic. I think when I played Master Quest, um, I usually get flower fanatic because it's kind of good early game to get that. What is it? Two FP save. Even though it's pretty costly on BP, but you know, since we have the one BP thing, it makes flower fanatic really good. There's tons of stuff that we, we're going to do. Um, I'll do the free fight with the blooper. I know we've already done it, but I kind of want to show off how good double dip is. And we're also going to fight the other blooper too. Yep, almost forgot the, the badge here. Dodge Master. Pretty good if, uh, if you're like me and bad at uh, guarding. It's a good badge to have. I'm gonna equip it now. And that's gonna be it for the episode. And also Death Spotter's free too, because I think Peekaboo's free as well. Let's see... You know, I'll equip these just because... I think I'll keep uh, Power Bounce on. Should be good for the next episode. Alright, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. See you guys next time.